Katrina informed from a tropical wave that uh, you know had been tracked across the Atlantic. These disturbances come off the coast of Africa every three or four days, just like clockwork, all through the hurricane season. It became a tropical depression on Tuesday, August the 23rd, over the central Bahamas. It became a tropical storm, got the name Katrina on Wednesday the uh, 24th, and then became a hurricane just before it made landfall here in southeast Florida on Thursday the uh, 25th of August. It uh, moved inland and actually took a jog to the southwest and that meant that it didn't really stay over land very long. Uh, exited the southwest coast of Florida early on the uh, Friday the 26th of August. It went from a strong tropical storm to a category two hurricane in about nine hours. So it went through that rapid intensification phase that uh, you know we see every now and then. Uh, and then it continued into the Gulf of Mexico on uh, Saturday, became a Category 3 hurricane, and then early on Sunday morning, actually strengthened to a Category 5 hurricane as it headed towards southeast Louisiana and uh, Mississippi. Uh, made the first Louisiana landfall on the mouth of the Mississippi River just south of a little town called Buras, about 6.10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. Uh, it has what we think was a Category 4 hurricane and then continued moving northward, uh, the final landfall near the Louisiana-Mississippi border about 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time on that Monday, the 29th of August. We had storm surge forecast up to 28 feet in the advisories there, and, and then right before landfall, Katrina did, in fact, weaken. Uh, there was, you know, that, that surge and the waves were produced by those strong winds while it was still offshore. There's always a lag in uh, what happened there with the storm surge and the wave action as the winds come down. And, and unfortunately, uh, they did not come down very much. They had tremendous storm surge flooding, as, as you know, along southeast Louisiana, Mississippi, and even uh, up into Mobile Bay. Actually, the highest storm surge uh, possible is, is likely in, in the northeast and Gulf of Mexico, just because of the geography there. And, and uh, also on the Atlantic coast, uh, where Long Island juts out from uh, the New Jersey coast there. But one of the greatest concerns uh, as far as hurricane vulnerability anywhere on the Gulf Coast has always been southeast Louisiana, and in particular the city of New Orleans, just because of its unique uh, characteristic there. You know, the city itself is, is a bowl. Uh, it averages five to eight feet below sea level. If you're walking around the French Quarter, you can see that the Mississippi River is, is actually elevated up above you. Uh, they have a very complex system of levees um, around the city and the, the outlying parishes. And, uh, you know, once those levees get overtopped, then the, the, the areas just fill up like a bowl. There's still a lot of discussion going on about the levees being overtopped or the levees actually being broken. and. Uh, I don't think the verdict is in yet. I'm sure that some of the levees were indeed overtopped, especially on the eastern side, the St. Bernard Parish side, but uh, the 17th, 17th Street Canal on the London Avenue uh, uh, levees, uh, at least what I'm hearing now is that they like to have breaches in them and not do the overtopping. Uh, but I can tell you this, as, as bad as the uh, uh, devastation was there, it could have been worse if Katrina had come in as a Calgary 5 hurricane and even a little bit farther to the west, uh, the, the flooding could have been even worse than it was. With any hurricane, you really need to assess your vulnerability to all the hazards, and that includes storm surge, uh, the high winds, the heavy rains, and the tornadoes, and you need to develop that individual hurricane plan uh, based on all those hazards. And in addition to that, you need to heed the advice of your local officials. If you look at the hurricane warnings uh, over the last uh, few decades, the, uh, the good news is the size of the hurricane warning area is coming down a little bit. And if you go back over the last five years, and we've just done that recently, uh, typically for every four times you go into hurricane warning, you'll likely only experience hurricane conditions uh, one time. Uh, we try to give a perfect forecast, every forecast we make, but the atmosphere is unbelievably complex. We know that we can't do that and uh, people really need to factor that into their plan. The penalty for not making those preparations, and, and that could indeed include evacuation in some cases, it's just too great. Uh, you know, we always tell people to pray for the best, but prefer, prepare for the worst, and if you don't heed those evacuation orders in some instances, uh, it could cost you your life. Katrina, we think, was a Category 4 hurricane at landfall. 
but it was much different than many of the hurricanes. In fact, if you look at the three Category 5 hurricanes that have hit the United States that we know of, the Labor Day hurricane in the Florida Keys in 1935, Hurricane Camille on the Mississippi coast in 1969, and Andrew here in southeast Florida in 1992, there was a big, big difference. Uh, Katrina may not have had uh, quite as strong winds as those three Cat 5 hurricanes, but Katrina was a much larger hurricane, certainly much larger than the Labor Day hurricane in 35 and, and Hurricane Andrew. Well, the fact that Katrina was such a large hurricane meant that uh, wherever it made landfall, it was going to have an impact on a very, very large area. And there's been so much focus on New Orleans itself here that, uh, you know, we will be sure people understand that a very large section of southeast Louisiana, the entire Mississippi coast, and even all the way up into Mobile Bay, that, that whole area had a big impact. Well, all the hurricanes are different, and when Katrina hit South Florida, we had some northerly winds aloft, and that meant that uh, the heavy thunderstorm activity and the wind field was really pretty asymmetric at that time. The, the strongest winds were actually on the southern side. Uh, that doesn't happen all the time, but again, all hurricanes were different. Well, when uh, Katrina hit Florida, it was actually strengthening. There's no doubt about that. It became a hurricane uh, just as it was hitting, and it uh, uh, moved across uh, Broward and Miami-Dade counties, and uh, uh, you know, likely weakened a little bit. But then, uh, as soon as it came off, it regained that strength, and there's no doubt that. Uh, you know, it, it had a, a good signature in the clouds, actually on satellite and on radar. And of course, it continued to strengthen thereafter. Why did Katrina become so strong? Well, a couple of reasons. One, it went over very warm waters in the Gulf of Mexico. There's something called the Gulf Loop Current uh, that not only is uh, uh, warm on the surface, but there's a deep pool of very warm water that extends down a few hundred feet into the ocean. And also, the upper level conditions were just ideal for strengthening large uh, what we call an anticyclone, a clockwise circulation at, at high levels in the atmosphere. And so those two things really uh, allowed that strengthening to occur uh, to Category 5 status at one time. Most likely those same conditions occurred in 1969 when uh, Camille was moving over the loop current and I'm sure the upper level conditions were, were quite favorable. But uh, again, there was a big difference. Uh, Camille may have been a little bit stronger uh, for the maximum sustained winds, but Katrina was much larger than, than Camille and impacting a much larger area. Vertical evacuation has been talked about since uh, the early 70s. 